affiliated with Lloyd's Register Foundation Center for Safety and Reliability Engineering at Aberdeen in, in Scotland. I'm going to talk today about frameworks for structural reliability assessment and risk management in incorporating structural health monitoring data and a few other things which I will explain uh, as I go. I will be metaphorically eating into the time we have for lunch, so I will try to be quick. The presentation is qualitative, it's a series of perspectives on SHM and its value. There will be no equations. Right, so, uh, again? Okay, all right, but nevertheless. Uh, all right, it, it makes sense to, to, to start with, uh, with a definition of what SHM is. There are many such definitions, obviously. Uh, we like to work uh, within one that was given by Emin Akhtan and his colleagues uh, more than 10 years ago. And they said that SHM is basically about tracking in situ. Keywords are in, in, um, in bold font. Tracking in situ structural performance or health by measuring data and interpreting them using application-specific knowledge so that aspects such as structural performance, condition, and reliability can be quantified objectively. It's a good definition. It's suitably broad. Uh, it seeks for, a, six for a, a, a deeper knowledge which and information that can be uh, extracted from SHM in terms of condition, reliability, and its uh, quantification. Uh, it is useful because uh, it doesn't say that SHM is equal to damage detection. Quite a lot of real life problems are really concerned with aspects of performance or perhaps serviceability limit state. The structure doesn't have to be necessarily damaged and well, damage detection is difficult. I think we can reliably perhaps uh, uh, at that stage uh, assess performance. Anyway, series of slides, trying series of, of uh, uh, ellipses to try to put SHM in a broader context. In its focused view, SHM is about sensing and data processing. Uh, <clears throat> well, of course, uh, that's not uh, the end of what we want to do with SHM. We want to create some information and knowledge about structural performance, condition, and so on and so forth, right? So to realize the, the value of that information. But again, the broader context of the view is, and we are here to, to, to think how value can be, can be actually extracted. But uh, well, again, this value will only be a concept, theoretical concept, if it's not linked to an even broader look at the SHM. And this is how we can, how we can actually realize this value in the whole asset management decision making, uh, making process. Another view of uh, SHM in that broader context, this time linear one, is in that, uh, in this slide. Well, we start with monitoring of, say, a wind turbine blade with some sensors, or we look at a K-joint in a, in a truss structure, perhaps a bridge or similar structure. Of course, any component of a structure like that is a part of a whole structural system, a wind turbine or a bridge, for example. We are quite comfortable moving in moving between the two kind of, you know, scales, looking at some hotspots within a structure and uh, looking how, uh, how particular areas which we monitor function as a part of the system, where the links are not that well developed and the scale is, uh, and we, we, we don't scale up probably that effectively as we should is, going to a bigger scale. This wind turbine will obviously be a part of a, of a whole farm right, with many, many similar structures. A bridge like that will be part of a transportation system serving particular city or a particular regions. Now, from the point of view of how any health monitoring data will be used, it will be used by owners, operators, stewards of uh, infrastructure systems in decision-making process, and they will very likely think at that level rather than here. So those links need to be strengthened and developed an SHM to realize its, its latent potential needs to, be, needs to be clearly anchored in those broader contexts. Otherwise, it's just very in the air, up in the air, not being properly interfaced uh, with, uh, with uh, objectives of those uh, stakeholders. A couple of slides where, uh, where which summarize areas where structural health monitoring can make a difference. 
uh, typically for new structures, innovative design materials and so on, we, where, where we, construction techniques, where we don't have enough knowledge about how they really function in a real environment. Structures and assets with poorly understood risks, and there's a whole spectrum of those risks, geological, seismic, meteorological, environmental, quality assessment, quality assurance, and so on and so forth. Newer existing structures, so-called indicative structures, you may say, which are representative of a larger population of similar structures, where hopefully information can be extrapolated to a wider population. That's more easy for, say, mechanical system, perhaps wind turbines, for hardcore civil infrastructure like bridges as a challenge. Well, each structure is, is quite unique, but nevertheless, some mileage perhaps can be, uh, can be uh, developed here depending on which sector you are talking about. New and exist or existing structures that are crucial at, or critical, sorry, at a system network level where failure or deficiency would have a serious impact on the system network functioning. Concept of critical infrastructure was covered in the second presentation. Then existing structures, where we know there are deficiencies already and problems, they have low rating and so on, and they want to continue uh, their uh, operation, extend their useful life. For example, many faci offshore facilities in the North Sea are already reaching their uh, design life, but, well, it would be very useful and important to extend this life. And finally, candidates for replacement or refurbishment, where we are able to using data to uh, assess the real need for intervention and consider repair, uh, assess uh, efficiency of uh, repairs after we have uh, conducted them. The OSHM can make impacts in several areas by reducing uncertainty about structural condition and performance. Once you start, uh, start monitoring a, um, a real structure, uh, most of them are designed with considerable conservatism, so you will find that it has quite a lot of hidden structural reserve, which is good news. Uh, on the other hand, well, of course, we don't know everything about structures. Uh, we will often discover, well, perhaps not that often, but from time to time discover deficiencies that may be missed by traditional assessment techniques. In both cases, you are winning because you know better about how your structure really behaves rather than what you assume and can manage uh, the risks in a more efficient way, cheaper, but at the same time keeping some uh, risk under check. Increasing safety and reliability, ensuring long-term quality of aging infrastructure. We hope to achieve uh, better informed asset management of uh, stocks of structures. And generally speaking, from the academic point of view, increased knowledge about in situ structural performance, which will later trickle down to say, code calibrations and, uh, and, uh, and uh, recommendations for, for design. So this is the, 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 these are the expectations. In some cases, there are already some results, but there are challenges. This figure is from uh, Franklin Moon of Drexel University. It captures quite well the history, perhaps in a harsh way, but captures quite well the history of structural health monitoring applications so far. Time is here on the horizontal axis and benefit to owner or steward, the photo of the gentleman in the, my second slide, is here on the vertical axis. Right? The red line is the reality, the real capability, capaci capacity of what a structural health monitoring system can achieve. And as time passes, due to research, due to experience with practical applications, yes, the benefits, real benefits, objective benefits are better and better. However, what is important here, and uh, well, Franklin uses words like uh, bubble, snake oil effect, and so on. When the, there was a lot of buzz in the past about what uh, SHM can deliver, leading to overly optimistic expectations. The industry subsequently realized that those benefits were really, were really not there. Right? It's a challenge to, to extract benefits from health monitoring. That led to backlash here. <coughs> Overly pessimistic assessment, much lower than the, the real capabilities of, uh, of SHM systems. So the task, hard task for us, is to really bring the expectations to, to well, close the gap between expectations or perceptions of, our, uh, of uh, SHM to reality. 
That's of course a considerable change. I, I think as, as, we, uh, as this, this, this uh, network sets up a, for a journey to quantify value of information, it is very important that we are as realistic as possible in, in our attempts. Right, to avoid those potential pitfalls and learn from the, from the past. So there is a need for realistic assessment of SHM capabilities. In other words, you can say that it's about the, the realistic assessment of the value of uh, SHM. And then follow up is the strategic plan deployment that is closely integrated into asset management and emergency response processes. I'm talking uh, in, in many of the slides about asset management slash emergency response to acknowledge that if you, if you deal with uh, bridges, you are operating with two time scales. One is slow, related to uh, aging, deterioration, corrosion, fatigue, and so on. You make decisions in the time scale of years or decades. The other reality depends if you are a right person at the right time, so to speak, and uh, you have to deal with, uh, with uh, emergency situations such as earthquake or perhaps flood or similar natural disaster. Then your time scale is uh, significantly, significantly shortened and uh, compressed. But, but generally speaking, those assess, those at the level of what I'm presenting here, asset management and emergency response processes and integration of SHM, proceeds along the same, along the same line. All right, so this is the, the, the outline of the rest of my presentation. I have done already the introduction. I will now talk about uh, two frameworks for such strategic integration of my... Of my uh, uh, strategic integration of, uh, of uh, SHM. First is based on, uh, on um, prioritization of structures for SHM. Second one uh, sees the SHM as a, in a value chain of uh, technologies. I will explain briefly the concept later. And a couple of additional uh, remarks. Seeing SHM as big data is an emerging and uh, very likely important, growing in importance uh, concept uh, for the years to come. And I will wrap up with a simple example of monitoring of a major bridge. I'm a structural engineer. Most of my work in SHM has been in the in, 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 um, in bridge area. So um, it tints my presentation and tilts it towards uh, the, the, the bridge applications. But I will try to keep the uh, in, uh, discussions general so that they are applicable to other, other structures, other systems as well. So first framework is about strategic, uh, strategies for integration of SHM into asset management and or, or emergency response and prioritization of structures for SHM, which follows in a natural way. The building blocks in that, which we proposed uh, for that strategic in, uh, integration, it starts with prioritization of bridges for application of SHM based on bridge importance in the network and a broad spectrum of risks. It is, of course, well, too expensive. It's, in, it's impractical. It's even not necessary to instrument each and every structure, and it's even not necessary to probably to instrument majority of structures. So you have to be strategic, given that you, that you always have limited resources, and try to implement the the, uh, the <clears throat> monitoring techniques on those structures, well, somehow choose them. The concept of risk is a, is a useful tool to, to make those decisions. Right? Then you can optimize the resources, and then, then the, the value of S which you can extract from SHM will be higher. Parts two and three are the core activities within SHM. Guidelines for instrumentation to be installed on bridge structures and their vicinity. It's quite often not only the structure, but its foundation, it's the soil. It can be the whole network where you will have to know the, 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 the traffic path patterns in your network or whole hydrological system if this is a bridge which, you, which has uh, scour risk. Right? Cost-effective hardware platforms are necessary here. Are relatively simple measures, I think, which can uh, help in assessment. From the point of view of uh, quanti uh, uh, using um, quantitative tools for assessing the value of this information, I think we definitely need a better, quanti uh, better quantification st in statistical sense of all the methods performance. For example, what is the uh, minimum damage size detectability and so on and so forth. Important because, uh, well, it, it, it's easy to do it on the computer. It works not that well in the lab for real structures. Most of the method, I think it's fair to say that uh, they will have considerable 
uh, uncertainty in terms of uh, in terms of uh, in terms of outline, and we have to be realistic about what 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 the methods we have under our belt can really deliver. Then, of course, methodologies for reliable condition damage and performance assessment are necessary. But so this is the SHM as such. Beyond that. There is strong need for integration of those SHM assisted assessment into broad asset management and necessary uh, and emergency planning. So that it's, it's well integrated and um, functions within the practices and policies of organizations responsible for functionality and transportation, uh, functionality of transportation system if we are talking about bridges. Otherwise, there will be again no, no real benefit beyond academic curiosity. <clears throat> we try to come up with a simple, uh, simple um, way of uh, prioritizing those bridges, uh, in a, bridges in a network based on bridge risk to the functioning of the transportation system. Understood risk, understood here in the classical sense, probability of failure times, times consequences. But we, we added another dimension, and this is bridge criticality. Right. Some bridges have such, uh, such large consequences of failure that it, they, they should really, really stand up. So the, the, the concept of criticality was again mentioned by, uh, was explored in the second presentation. That enabled us to uh, specify three different data collection and associated SHM application bands, core, intermediate, and advanced. For core data collection, this is for low risk and criticality bridges. Visual inspections don't have to be, to be very, very often uh, conducted very often. And SHM will probably not be used or maybe sparingly. Intermediate visual inspection following two, three year uh, typical cycle supplemented by some SHM. Advanced data collection where bridge criticality is high. Visual inspection will be more frequent, have some individual uh, timeline for them and they will need to be supplemented by advanced SHM. So that provides a simple way of deciding which bridge I really want to or which asset I really want to uh, consider SHM and where it won't be necessary and will probably be just a waste of money. Uh, the second framework of seeing uh, a way of seeing SHM in a broader context is SHM in a value chain of uh, technologies. This is a concept which goes back to a paper by Wong and Yao in computer-aided civil and infrastructure engineering nearly 15 years ago. Uh, what, they, what they proposed is seeing SHM as follows. SHM is here. It starts with monitoring data collect and data collection using sensing methodologies, signal processing using appropriate tools, and fi finally data analysis, for example, for data uh, damage detection or some other forms of statistical processing of of the data. But so what, right? What, what can we do with the, those results of the analysis? The next logical step is reliability, safety, and risk assessment, right? Using appropriate science and art, because it's quite often uh, art as much as science. Once we, are, we, we, we completed this task, we, have, uh, we can start to, to manage uh, our risks. We need some decision-making tools. And only with that, this is the real value to the infrastructure stakeholders, right? They want, they want or their task is to, or desire and, well, and uh, obligation is to deliver safe, reliable, and efficient infrastructure at a minimum cost, right? They don't care what is happening here. They, 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 they care at the, the other end. But so far, the information is not flowing uh, sufficiently through this, uh, through this value chain. There's tenuous link, or you might say gap, between SHM and the, 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 the next in the chain of the enabling technologies. And this link needs to be developed if we want to really, really deliver the value of SHM to the, to the stakeholders and clearly articulate. Now, th this will enable us to clearly articulate uh, that, uh, that value of SHM. And it seems to be a condition for wide adoption of SHM. Uh, another another uh, issue which I got interested in uh, recently is the big data perspective on SHM. Right? If you start monitoring any, any structure, you will immediately be overwhelmed with, uh, with data. Here is an example. It might be an extreme example, 
Uh, but nevertheless, it's a real example. Stonecutter Bridge in Hong Kong from paper by Nian, Yong, uh, Nian Wong. This bridge has 15, more than 1,500 sensors. Accelerometers, temperatures, strain gauges, there's WIM system, and many, many other. Corrosion, digital cameras, uh, and so on and so forth, right? So, uh, as you can see, this is a lot of sensors and a lot of data being collected. Um, is SHM data big data? Well, big data is characterized typically by three extremes or extraordinary qualities. Volume, velocity, veracity, sorry, ver variety and veracity or uh, uncertainty. Volume, as you can see, the, for large bridges, volume and velocity, for large bridges, there is in the order of thousands of sensors and so on. So I think it does put uh, pressure on, perhaps not so much on storage. Storage becomes cheaper and cheaper. Uh, every day uh, these days, but well, transfer, if you have wireless networks which are becoming more popular, it's a huge, huge bottleneck. But more importantly, timely and efficient interrogation uh, puts quite a lot of pressure on available analytical techniques. So the question is how much data uh, to collect? Again, if you uh, manage to assess before you start doing uh, any monitoring, uh, value of that data, that will be a very, very useful concept because there is a tendency that uh, let's have more sensors and so on. Is it really, really necessary and so on, right? Hmm? Yeah, okay. Variety and veracity, lots of things can be, can be said. Comprehensive SAHM systems will have uh, data sampled at different intervals, different sensor, different accuracy, diverse technologies. It needs to be merged with other forms of data from visual inspections. They will always remain for bridges for us for a feature. future. Uh, SHM will not, uh, not replace them as such. It can help to create additional information. Uh, uh, and other forms of data, such as data stored in, as drawings or descriptive or quantita quantitative, qualitative report. We also need to think about how all the data mining uh, uh, techniques can be integrated with expertise and judgment by, by engineers, so that it, they can syn synergize uh, between different data. Digital twin, which is, is a concept which is quite becoming quite popular in aerospace uh, industry. Uh, it's effectively, uh, and it's enabled by, or will be enabled by big data from SHM monitoring. Digital Twin integrates high fidelity multi-physics and multi-scale models and simulations with SHM data, maintenance history, and all available historical data. Uh, it enables to, uh, to create much more realistic digital twins than what we are doing now, the presence of, uh, of uh, a lot of, or ample data from monitoring, and new and enhanced levels of safety and reliability without over-designing of structures seem to be more and more uh, realistic for us. Uh, okay, and finally, I will probably skip this part. Some of you have seen it perhaps more than once, I'm sure, about uh, uh, monitoring of a bridge with it. Uh, just briefly, we are trying to, uh, uh, we have a system which has around 90 channels of data. We try to uh, create effectively a digital twin as much as we can by calibrating both uh, models for both dynamic short-term response as well as long-term response related to creep and, cri sorry, creep and shrinkage and, uh, and uh, creep data to have both calibrated time-dependent structural models for reliability simulations and probabilistic models of actual responses, loads, and uh, other effects. All right, I will skip some numerical data. Summary conclusion, clear link to reliability and assessment of structure for an overall asset management necessary uh, for SHM to realize its, its latent potential. Two frameworks I briefly, I briefly touched on uh, big data presents emerging challenges, but also opportunities. And the example of a bridge, which I didn't have time to uh, show much. Uh, this is based on uh, partly on my research, but uh, quite a lot of it is just literature survey with some, some uh, I try to digest this, so I would like to acknowledge uh, the many resources I used. More of them are in the paper. And finally, I would like to thank my supporters as well as the many collaborators which devoted themselves to various aspects of this research. Thank you very much. <clears throat>